Hi guys, it's Neo. I just came up on 5,000 subscribers and I didn't, I wasn't expecting it so I wasn't prepared to do anything. But now that it has happened, I just want to thank you guys so much. Um, I don't even know what to say. I'm really glad that you like my speed paints that much. Um, and so what I wanted to do was a little shading tutorial. So I guess I will get to that right now. Okay, so for this tutorial, I just did a really quick picture of Markiplier. Really quick. <laughs> um, hopefully you already know who he is. And yes, I already made him a get well picture. So um, for this tutorial, it's not shading so much as shading styles. So um, I'm just going to show you two or three different styles that I like to use. So the first one is the hard shading style. So right here is the lasso tool. Um, I'm using Photoshop Elements 8.0. Um, this is the lasso tool, so what I'll do is I'll make a new layer right above the um, color layer, but below the lines layer, and then I'll start selecting what I want to be shaded once I fill it in. So for this, I could do different sections at a time, um, because um, I have it on the option um, where it will add on selections um, instead of create a new selection. And I um, am completely free to go outside of the color and the line art because um, I will show you in a minute how we can completely get rid of that. It's very simple. So right now I'm just kind of plotting in where I would probably shade if the light was coming from the left, just straight on left, I guess. Um, I usually wing my shading, um, obviously I know shading techniques, some, not many, but, um, but for this, I'm just doing a quick little, um, simple way that I like to do it. If I'm drawing just a short, um, quick picture like this one. So, um, so yeah, I'll shade the nose and the, and the teeth kind of like that, maybe a little bit under the lip. And even if the hair and clothes are black, like in this one, um, I'll still shade them because they're not all the way black. They're really dark gray, just in case. Um, okay, so I have selected what I want selected, I believe. So what I'll do... There's two different ways to do this. So the first way is, um, the first way is just to fill it in just how it is. So I take just the fill bucket and then I fill in what I've just selected. Now all you do is um, I use the keyboard shortcuts, control D to deselect. Um, I'm gonna fix this up a little bit. So I missed some edges. And then, um, while holding control, press the color layer, and then control shift I will inverse the selection. And as long as you're selecting the um, shading layer, all you do is hit delete and it goes away. So then the opacity is right up here. I'm not sure how to pronounce that, but uh, so I bring it down to however much I need it to. So that is the first way of shading, really simple and really fast. Um, the other one is, I'll just reselect this again um, to do, well, Firstly, do that so that you don't have anything outside of the lines, but then instead of just filling it in, there's a gradient, um, and I just take the straight one, go, like, drag the gradient from uh, the darkest side, so from the right in this picture, and just drag it to where you think is a good amount, because then when you deselect it and pull down the opacity, it has more of a fading look than um, this would. So this is just really simple. This is just slightly more dynamic. Both of them are great um, for different things. This one's kind of fun. Um, and then for the soft shading, um, so I'll select the actual color layer so that I don't go outside this one because it um, it's just easier that way. So make a new layer and what I do is select the brush instead of the pencil by pressing B. Make sure I have um, <clears throat> a soft brush and then pull down the opacity, it depends. I'll just bring it down to about 30. <clears throat> so what I'll do for this one is I'll have multiple layers. Um, this 
is the so the first layer would be um, just the general wherever it's gonna be shaded kind of and it's not really specific and just kind of go like that so then I bring that really down just just so I know what I'm starting with um, so then I will make a, co a completely new layer with new opacity and so 100% basically so I can see what I'm doing and just bring down the size of the brush um, so that I can do little details I mean obviously it's not exactly detailed but um, it's more detailed than the heart shading um, so you wouldn't actually um, Um, oh yeah, so pressing down um, harder doesn't do anything, but press, but um, going over what you've already done again makes it darker because the opacity on the actual brush is low. So what I'll do is just go back and forth the parts that I want darker. I'll just make, I'll just go over a few more times. Um, sometimes you have to be careful because you might get awkward little shapes like that right there on his um, teeth. So then I'll take the, the eraser, if, if I really wanted to do this, well, I guess this will come later too, but, um, and bring down the opacity, make sure it's soft, and just kind of fix what I just did. And then go over it darker. All right. So then just kind of go in the places that I went before with the hard shading. Um, you have to make sure not to get little shapes that look like that, right there. Because that just doesn't look, it doesn't look like shading, it, it looks like a brush stroke, and that's not exactly what you want. So, um, then it kind of looks a little awkward right now. Um, I haven't taken the opacity down yet, so that's part of the reason. But also, there's a big difference between the lights and the darks on this one. So let me bring the opacity down, that's a little bit better. Um, actually that fixes my problem, but if it were to be darker like that, then I would make a completely new layer, um, get a bigger brush, maybe even lower the opacity on the brush, and just kind of go over the bright spots where they need to be shaded in a little bit more to just kind of blend it, like, like that. Um, but for this I'll just take this down and I'll take this down a little bit. Um, so that would be for the, just the regular soft shading. Um, if I wanted to go in and edit it, I would take the eraser like I did before, um, that is soft and has low opacity, and just go over like what I needed to erase, like if I made an awkward mistake. I just kind of go over it and like brighten up things that needed brightening, um, and then even darken things that need darkening, like, like that. Okay, so, um, so that would be just a regular soft shading. Then something that is kind of fun to do would be to take the hard shading that I did before, so all I'm doing is making this layer visible. This is the second type of hard shading that I showed you. Um, and just take this hard shading and take it down uh, in opacity so that you can still see the effects of the hard shading. Here, I'll zoom in. So you can see the hard shading, especially right there on his neck. Um, and so it gives you more of a form, but you also have the soft shading to complement that and kind of have a hard and soft look at the same time. So um, that's a pretty good look. I like that one too. Um, so that's just for the regular... Um, okay. Uh, that's just for the regular black and white shading. And by black and white, I mean um, shading with black and not putting any color above it. Now, I did not make this up. I found this in a tutorial. I'm going to stress that again because I really don't want to steal someone else's idea because this was not my idea. Um, but the idea is, uh, like I mentioned before in my Toy Freddy speed paint that I commentated, um, to... I'm going to take all the shading off for now. To select the entire uh, color layer like I have, go above the lines layer, so that would include his glasses and facial hair. And then um, for this picture, I would go yellow and blue because these are the complementary colors that I'll be using for the shading. So um, then I'll just fill in the whole thing yellow. Obviously, that's you take down the opacity a lot, like in the bottom 5%, really, like really not that noticeable. But then um, when you do that and you do, let's say, just the first kind of hard shading, then that looks fine. 
But let's say, um, I'll bring this up again. So um, instead of black, you do the complementary color of yellow, which is blue, go really dark blue and just fill it in really dark blue instead of the black that it was before. And then when you take down the opacity, it has a brighter, more colorful um, edge to the actual shading because um, like compare that to that or even that. Just uh, these two layers together are really important to have together. You can't have one without the other. I mean, you could, but um, to get this effect, you need both of them. You could do the same with any other type of shading like this soft shading. It is, um, it looks yellow right now because it's under the yellow little mask. So, but to make it pop a little bit more, instead of um, black, I'll just, I just um, put opacity lock and I'll just go over it with blue. When it's blue, it's more bright and like, um, kind of, it's just more bright and colorful than if I were to shade it like that. Um, if you see what I mean, I really like that. Um, again, I did not, I did not discover that for myself. These are just the main forms that I use because I really like these. Um, they're kind of all together in one layer right now, which is, that's, I guess that's also an option. So that would be the hard shading without the gradient, the shading with the gradient and, or the hard shading with the gradient and the soft shading, and then adding the complementary color combination to them makes them pop a lot more, and so that's what I've been trying to do more recently. Um, so this was specifically for 5,000 subscribers. Thank you guys again. Um, I know I already thanked you, but I can't believe I'm already at 5,000. Um, and if you want to see more speed paints, just check out my channel, I guess. I have a lot of speed paints without commentary. Um, I have one speed paint with commentary. Um, so far. So maybe you'll be watching this in the future and I'll have more. I don't know. Um, so, uh, if you don't know who Markiplier is, you must. So his channel will probably just be in the description. I'm pretty sure everyone will know who he is anyway, especially if you're part of the Five Nights at Freddy's fandom. And um, I'm pretty sure that's it. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching, so much for supporting me, and so much for subscribing to me. And I will see you guys in, oh, okay, okay. I'll see you guys in the next speed paint, bye.